I have the time to go there uh, today because it's a little bit further from me than Karohair, but I have my sights set on, on that later today. So when I get home, I will show you my H Mart haul, but that is what is going on. I am, uh, it's a cloudy day out and yep, yep, yep. See, you can see the sun coming through. So here in my produce spa from H Mart, I got some heads of broccoli. I really enjoy broccoli quite a bit. Um, and while I have a huge thing of frozen broccoli in the freezer, this was a good deal. And I also enjoy it fresh. Speaking of broccoli, I got some Chinese broccoli tops, these are called. Um, and I'm excited to try cooking with these. They look really good. Um, the leaves look really green and vibrant, and I like that they have these uh, kind of woody appearing stems. I bet those are gonna be great in like um, broths and soups and that kind of thing. I also got some cilantro here. And then I got two, four, five Pacific Rose Apples. I enjoy these and uh, they're really delicious. They're nice and crisp and they're not too sweet, so I like them. Then I am really enjoying the pea sprouts that I get at H Mart. Um, I, these are um, really great in salads, um, you know, if you're into wraps and that kind of thing, they're fantastic. I know you can sprout your own peas, and I'd love to do that, but these are really inexpensive at H Mart, and so I'm enjoying the convenience of them. Thanks, Fuji! Speaking of convenience and good deals, I got two more enoki mushrooms. I can't believe these are two for a dollar. That seems really, really inexpensive to me. And they're so delicious. They taste like noodles in broth. And um, I'm just really enjoying them quite a bit. I showed how I used these in my um, shirataki noodle recipe with the lotus root. Speaking of that, we got some vegan chicken cutlets here on the styrofoam deli tray. <laughs> Just kidding. These are two lotus roots. I have really been enjoying cooking with these. They're so easy to deal with. You just peel them like a potato and slice them. They have a nice, uh, pretty, um, spoke wheel appearance to them and they just soak up the flavors of the broth really nicely and I'm really enjoying them a lot. So that was a, a tryout win. And then I have been dying to try these. These are purple yams. Um, so I got three of those. It just looks so pretty when you peel them. I've seen on like Instagram and stuff and I've always wanted to try one. And they had a ton of them. So I got some of those. I also had, uh, you know, my usual two bulbs of garlic and an onion. I swear though, the garlic at H Mart is better than the garlic at Kroger. Um, it just is like fresher and easier to peel somehow. I don't know if it's a different strain or what, but I really have been enjoying their garlic. And then I also got some more of this wakame that I really enjoy um, to salt things with. And I got some more of my shirataki or yam noodles. These are these are actually the best ones I've ever had. I used to say the Vitacost were the best ones, but this particular brand, the yam noodle shirakiku, these are the best ones I've ever had. Vitacost is a close second. These are by far the best ones though from H Mart, these white ones. They also have ones that are like um, translucent with black speckles that are pretty good too, but these are my favorite. Speaking of black speckles and shirakiku, oh, I totally love these roasted black sesame seeds. So I got another um, canister of those. Um, they just have such a great flavor and they kind of go, they kind of go both ways, sweet and savory. They just go wonderful in everything and I'm really enjoying them. And then my mom, and then my mom has turned me on to this chili garlic sauce. Growing up, we always had sriracha around, and um, I don't really like sriracha that much. It, it's not that hot to me. It's not that spicy to me. It's kind of sweet. Um, but this, my mom has been purchasing and kind of mixing with a little bit of aminos, and I think she mixes in almond butter or something and makes like a little salad dressing. So I got some for myself because I like it too, this chili garlic sauce. And then you guys know I really enjoy this brand, Lote, Lote. One of you all helped me with the pronunciation, but I've already forgotten. I think it's Lote. Um, and they make a gum that is xylitol-based, sweetened with xylitol, which is supposed to help 
um, keep uh, little pests from adhering to your enamel if you chew after after consuming. But I got these Lote Anytime uh, Hard Candies. They're supposed to be the flavor of Milky Mint. And a fun funness, I scanned the ingredients for this. They have a uh, milk flavor, but not actual milk. So they're, they're non-dairy. They're just a hard candy with, uh, you know, flavoring in them. I'm sure these are not like the best thing for you, but they looked intriguing and I'm into trying, I'm into trying international, um, <laughs> candies. Uh, I'm not a big candy person, but I like trying stuff out. So I wanted to try these. And then look at this sexy beast. If you are at all apprehensive about going towards a plant-based diet, let this be your spirit animal. I mean, look at this thing. Isn't it beautiful? It almost looks like something under the sea. Like, move over, Ariel. This thing is coming at you. I'm so excited for this. This is a dragon fruit or pataya. It was recently rebranded in the uh, wellness world. Dragon fruit. It is delicious. So I'm excited to experiment with actually using, using it myself and peeling it and dealing with it. Um, I've had it before and smoothie bowls. It imparts such a vibrant color to things, so I'm going to experiment with this one, but yeah, that's everything I picked up at H Mart. Love that place to a death. Woohoo! But speaking of H Mart, one of the last times that I went in there, I stocked up on mung beans. And so I took it upon myself to just soak a third of a cup of them this morning. I just popped them in this bowl with water. Here, I'll show you guys. Because, I'll show you what I'm gonna do. There they are, they're all hydrated. And in like five minutes, they're gonna be cooked with the magic of the Kosari. I'm totally loving this thing. But anyways, I just put away my groceries and I'm gonna whip up um, some stuff for, for dinner. First of all, I'm gonna, I've got some of the lotus root that I already have in the fridge that is pre-sliced. So I'm gonna get that and then I'm gonna use that chili garlic sauce and my um, coconut aminos that I get from iHerb and a little bit of rice vinegar and I'm gonna marinate the lotus root or just kind of soak them in like a garlicky um, chili brine, if you will, so they'll get absorb the flavors. And then tonight I think I'm gonna steam them in my kasari and uh, have them with some mung beans, so. All right, so this is how I'm gonna do this. These are my lotus root slices um, that I had previously just had soaking in a little bit of water and um, white vinegar, and I drained that off, rinsed them again in clean water, and I put them in this container. And then this is gonna be the lotus root marinade that I whipped up here. I'm using the le leftover rice vinegar I have in here. It's um, a tablespoon of rice vinegar and half a teaspoon of the chili garlic sauce and a teaspoon of my um, Dynamic Health coconut aminos and about three tablespoons of apple cider vinegar. And I'm so pleased with this um, Kikoman rice vinegar bottle that um, I can repurpose for just this thing. So I'm stoked to, um, to have that in my lineup of repurposed uh, bottles that have an actual function versus just me holding on to out of, I don't know, desire not to hurt their feelings by sending them to the recycling bin. Okay, so those are just gonna incubate in there for a while and I'm gonna head to the gym and when I get out of the gym, I'm going to uh, just uh, steam them right before dinner and they're gonna come out fantastic and I will have those with mung beans and uh, some probably salad ingredients. And you can see my mung beans are completely done so those will be delicious likewise. Well, hey guys, what's up? I just got um, back from the gym and hopped in the shower, hopped out and slapped on a Hada Labo uh, sheet mask solely for the purpose of keeping my face damp because while I was in H Mart, I buzzed on over to the K-Beauty <clears throat> section and um, I saw they got in some new Mediheal masks. You guys know I have fun doing these Mediheal masks. I reviewed a bunch of them and these I have never seen before and I was intrigued to try them. This is the Aqua Chip Circle Point Mask. It's got these like discs in it and you put the mask on and I guess you press the little discs and it delivers um, some of the ingredients to your face. 
um, in certain areas. So, or at least that's what I think it does. I can't entirely, I can't read the instructions, so I'm gonna kind of wing it. The, the ingredients are in English, um, and it of course has fragrance in it. So, you know, it's something that's more likely to be problematic, um, aside from it just being, just being something fun to do. All right, so let's open it up here. You guys have a good day today? Chit chat, open the bag here. Comment below, good day, bad day. Oh, hard to, uh, I did not uh, do my, my silicon overlay. That was gonna be too complicated. Ew, it looks like something from under the sea, like a squid or something, or like martini olives on here, okay. Um, so we're just gonna open her up. I like to do the, I like to put sheet masks on in the shower as soon as I turn the shower water off. Um, and my face is like nice and hydrated rather than putting them on dry skin. I just find they're more efficacious that way. Ew, it's got like little bumpy, bumpy beads. Oh, can you see that? They're like little Julie doodles. Okay, this is cool. Okay, this is fun. I thought this would be fun. That's, that's why I'm doing it. For fun. Tee hee. <laughs> All right. Let's peel off Hadalabo. And let us... Go from Japan, we're going from Japan to Korea. <laughs> oh, I can smell the fragrance. What's that? They have one that, one of these Mediheal masks I reviewed for you guys that I like, the um, NMF, NMF, the Natural Moisturizing Factor one that's got ceramides in it. That one's kind of nice. Ew, cool. This is cool. I feel like, like I'm some kind of a droid or something. I'm kind of a... A creature. Oh my gosh, I look like I've got a rickett seal disease, actually. <laughs> All right, so um, I think we're supposed to, maybe we're supposed to massage these in. I have no clue. Um, this shows the, the gal like laying down and zenning out and somebody's like gently massaging her face. So maybe that's what I'm supposed to do. I have no clue, but I imagine this is supposed to stick on for 20 minutes. The thing I like about the MediHeal mask, here, let's just put them down, is uh, they have a lot of goopy stuff in them. And so you can kind of squeegee them out afterwards um, and, you know, reuse the stuff if you want, although it's basically perfume. <laughs> um, but... Uh, this is fun. All right, cool. I don't feel anything being like sub-released in any of these little compartments, so that's interesting, but. All right, so let's see here. This particular mask has um, some ingredients I've reviewed for you guys at length. Um, niacinamide, I have a video on niacinamide and skincare. Um, and so that's kind of a good, good ingredient in here as far as it can help with redness and irritation. Uh, it can also help with dry skin and it can help with um, kind of dull skin as well as acne prone skin. It's just like kind of a good ingredient, but a lot of you guys use like, like the niacinamide serums and you love them. Um, there's really not a whole lot of, of objective information on how much, like what percentage you should be using. And like everything in, in cosmetic skincare, it's not regulated, so you're kind of up to their mercy as far as how much of it is actually in there. But they claim that that is in there. It has a uh, tea tree extract in it, which, uh, you know, you can develop an allergy to, as I've said. Uh, there is some evidence that it can be helpful in acne, but should it degrade, which is common, uh, it can really be more problematic, and it is no more efficacious than its gal pal willow bark extract, or um, salicylic acid, who is also in here. Um, so, you know I'm a fr friend of salicylic acid, or BHA, um, in face wash forms. Um, so that is in here. That's cool. And this also has witch hazel, which is pretty benign, can be kind of soothing, hydrating. And it also has aloe. Cool. Aloe is also soothing. Beta-glucan, that's like, um, the kind of goopy stuff that, that is in my, um, my shirataki noodles I love. Um, it, it's in a lot of like uh, the kind of fungusy fungi, fungi kind of make beta-glucans in their wall and they bind water. So they're really fun in skincare. They're pretty inert um, and don't really cause many much, much in the way of problems and can really help to hold moisture on the skin. So that's cool. Um, but then, you know, oh, and the other cool ingredient in this is it's got a little bit of jojoba in it. Jojoba oil can be moisturizing, pretty gentle, doesn't seem to be problematic. It has tocopherol acetate, which is vitamin E. Vitamin 
E and like like taking straight vitamin E capsules. I know it's like really popular and I always have to like address this in the comments. Vitamin E just like slapping it on your skin has actually been shown to be incredibly irritating and not the least bit helpful for scars. I mean, I know for the longest time people were told, oh, vitamin E for a scar, but turns out that's wrong. So um, no, that's not good. But tocopherol acetate or vitamin E is also added to um, skincare products um, kind of as a kind of binding ingredient and in a low concentration uh, such that it's well tolerated, not like squeegeeing straight vitamin E oil on your face, in other words. It's also, you know, kind of stabilizes some of the ingredients a little bit. But then, then they put a ton of fragrance in here. Well, a bunch of different extracts that are basically just fragrance, like uh, bergamot fruit oil. So if you do this mask, don't do it first thing in the morning and then go out in the sun. You might develop a phytophotodermatitis, um, which is something that can happen with uh, oil of bergamot. Uh, rosemary extract, again, I mean, honestly, that's that's something for uh, for, for like a pizza, not, not your face, but cool. It doesn't smell like rosemary. And then we've got flower oil, some other sort of bark in here. So those could be problematic for show, but um, just kind of transiently on here. I'm gonna leave it on for 20 minutes. It's fun, I'm not gonna lie, I'm having a ball. I'm having a blast amundo. I mean, this honestly, these kinds of things, like I say, they're for fun. They're for relaxation. Relaxation, chilling out, having hobbies. These are actually really beneficial habits first for overall health and skin health you know to have have some things that you enjoy doing that bring you happiness and pleasure i mean that that actually uh, bodes well for your overall health skin included that's kind of why i enjoy sharing with you guys bits and clips of my day when i'm able to and like you know some of my the things that i enjoy to kind of show you and give you a picture of that you know you can wear, you know, I promote sunscreen, gentle moisturizers. Those are kind of the attendants of skincare, um, following up with your dermatologist regularly. But, you know, as far as genuinely for skin health, I mean, it's like sometimes you, you kind of have to ask yourself, do I have a life? Like, am I happy? Am I enjoying enjoying the things that I do? That That's really important, you know. If you're unhappy and, you know, frowning all the time and you know just in a really miserable place you're not sleeping properly I mean your immune system detects that unhappiness and you know it, it kind of can you know manifest itself in your skin it, you know dissatisfaction with the way things may be going you know personal struggles what have you can lead to sleep problems poor sleep you know doesn't allow the immune system to to uh, really help heal the skin properly, and, and things can, can go awry. I mean, look at any any inflammatory skin disease always gets worse when the individual is under stress. I mean, it's like bing, 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 psoriasis, eczema, I mean, you name it. Uh, people who are, um, have, you know, um, herpes cold sores outbreaks, they get stressed out, they get a breakout oftentimes. So, I mean, stress, you know, it really doesn't make, it just never makes anything better. You gotta have things in your life that help that help you coping strategies for stressful situations. So hopefully my videos kind of share little bits and bobs of, of habits that I've developed in my life that bring me joy and are, are really kind of helpful kind of stress distractors, if you will, because stress is an inevitable part of life. So anyways, guys, um, hopefully this goes well. Wish me luck, but I'm gonna end the vlog adundo here. Um, I'm gonna have my lotus root and jive along. So if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow, bye.